Just because I can't do everything doesn't mean I can't do anything. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz and this is Ascension Presents. So I recently got an email from someone who had a really serious, like deep, deep question. And the deep question was, um, they kind of ex explained that, um, they, they, how would I say this? They listed a number of the, uh, the wounds in their life. Uh, and this particular person was, was, was listing the number of ways in which they had um, misused their sexuality. And they experienced like, um, they were, the, the big reason they were writing to me and listing off like, here's the ways in which I have misused uh, my sexuality and, been, and my, it has been misused by others is because they were experiencing a great amount of discouragement. The discouragement was, um, so will I ever really be healed? Like, because I've done these things, does that mean like I'm basically a lost cause? Um, and I just thought, wow, that's really fascinating because they kind of almost, almost about to, they were almost about to land the plane and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much a lost cause when it comes to this, aren't I? Um, there's no real hope for me when it comes to uh, love. There's no real hope for me when it comes to the Lord. Um, he probably can't do anything with me, can he? Um, or will I have to, because because I don't, I've done these things, I'll have to carry this with me the rest of my life, right? He can't heal me question mark, period, almost kind of a thing. And I was like, wow, I'm really glad this person wrote because the fact of the matter is, and the reason I wanted to make this video is because I know that there's a lot of people who would also ask that same question. They would say, okay, so does my past disqualify me from a future of freedom? Does my, does, do my sins disqualify me from a, a future of healing? Um, will I ever really be healed from my sins? Will I, or healed from the wounds of my sins? Now, if you're asking that question, it means you haven't given into fully into you haven't fully given into discouragement that there is still uh, that spark of hope and I just fan that spark of hope as best as you can because the enemy one of the things that one of his one of his worst insidious just like terrible horrible uh, uh, what do you call them, weapons is uh, is discouragement is that that sense of like okay I can't I can't believe or I can't trust that God can do something with me still like oh my gosh fight against that maybe more than anything else. That's number one. Number two is um, the Lord, God is bigger than our sins. Like that's flat out, just hands down, 100% true. The Lord is bigger than your sins. Uh, I think it was St. Therese of uh, Lisieux who once said, she said, if you, um, if you took all of the sins of the world, like every awful thing and every, um, it, that, that we all recognize as awful, like absolutely evil thing and every small hidden sin that's ever committed by every human being in the history of humanity and made them into this giant like ball of sin. She said, if you take that massive ball of all of humanity's sin and you were to throw it into the fire, the furnace of God's mercy, she said it would be like throwing a drop of water into a raging inferno. So question, what would a drop of water do to a raging inferno? It wouldn't do anything. It would be gone. And so we recognize this. God wins. Like God's love is more powerful than our weakness. That his redemption, his mercy is more powerful than our wounds and, and our misery. So keep that in mind. God wins. Whenever we hand over our wounds to him, he can transform them. He heals them. He, sorry, he forgives them. He can heal them. Even if, here's the third piece, even if we're not ever fully healed. We know this. We know this is true, that there are internal consequences to our sins, and that's, that's death. That's hell. There's also temporal consequences to our sins, and some of those temporal consequences can be worked out in purgatory, obviously, but they're also worked out in this life. So yes, because I've done X, sometimes that means I can't do Y anymore. I just can't do it anymore. Sometimes those consequences are, are external to us um, in the sense that, yeah, um, I treated these people in such a way and when I, when I was in deep in sin or even just kind of, I treated my friends like this and now they no longer trust me. So that's, that's kind of like independent of, of me. It's outside of me, right? There's also some, some consequences of sin that are internal. And it's like, yeah, because I've given myself over to these sins, I now experience, I carry with me a woundedness. I carry with me some wounds. Um, now those wounds can be healed just like those relationships can be healed, but they're not always healed. And so that's when people start going like, see, that stinks, you know, because, ah, because if I'm not fully healed, then how could God ever really fully use me? And this is what we have to realize, that, um, that yes, sins have consequences, eternal, that are, are completely forgiven, and temporal, that aren't always completely healed. But just because I can't do everything doesn't mean I can't do anything. 
And just because I have some wounds that I'm carrying with me through this life doesn't mean that I can't still be, that you can't still be the person God has called you to be and wants you to be and is willing you to be and wants to give you the grace to be able to be. Here's the example. Um, I was watching, uh, uh, <laughs> I was on the gram, right, on Instagram, and there was this guy who was doing deadlifts. And this guy, I have to, I have to admit, um, not only did he have an intense, intense beard, like way better than mine has ever been, um, he was also lifting heavier weights than me. He had one leg. And one of those legs, he lost one leg in, in battle. Now, he could look at his life and say, well, what the heck, see? I only have one leg. I, I will never get this other leg back. And so because I will never get be fully healed, I uh, can't do anything. I can't lift, I can't be an athlete, I can't, I can't get, get into athletics, I can't, why bother being as strong as I can be because I'll never be fully healed. But this guy did not say that. This guy did not say, just because I can't do everything, that also means I can't do anything. He's like, no, just because I can't do everything, I'm gonna deadlift this weight and it was like a massive amount of weight for any, even person with two legs, two arms, whatever, to deadlift. It was amazing. If he were to let the fact that he's not fully healed and in this life will never be fully healed in that particular way, hold him back from even from being the person that God is calling him to be now, I mean, athletically, whatever, you know what I'm saying? He'd be giving up such an opportunity to live. And the same thing is true for us spiritually. There may be wounds that we carry with us spiritually and say, well, gosh, I'll always be wounded in this way or that way. I'll always have this weakness. Maybe you will. Maybe God will heal it because he can do that. Maybe, but maybe you'll have, always have that wound and you won't be able to be as free as you would have been if you hadn't given into that sin or those sins, whatever the thing is. But just because you can't do everything doesn't mean you can't do anything. And just because you might still have some wounds that aren't fully healed, that doesn't mean that, doesn't mean that God can't do something incredible in you. So rather than, than looking at all the other able-bodied people around us, all the other like uh, able-souled people around us and say, ah, I wish I'd never sinned like this. I wish I'd never been in this situation. I wish my life had been different. I get it. I get it looking at them and saying it's easier for them. Fine. Maybe it is easier for them. But you're not called to live their life. You're called to live your life. Life without wounds would be so much easier. It would be in some ways. But you and I have life with wounds. And so God isn't calling us to do something we can't do. He's calling you to live with your own wounds. To every morning say, God, I need your grace again. Help me to move forward. God, I need your grace to come back into this wound because it's, it, it's wounds kicking back in. It's, it's flaring up and I, I need your help. Because here's the last thing. Sometimes it's our wounds that bring us back to the Lord. Sometimes it's our wounds that remind us, oh my gosh, I need you so much, Lord. And so we wake up every morning and go to bed every night and we get that attack. We get that, we feel that, mm, that pinch and we realize, that's right, I need you and you're here for me. So receive the grace, live with the wound, but embrace the Lord. For all that's here at Ascension Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless.